Hello everyone, welcome to JS Cakes and my name is Deepak. Here in this tutorial, I'm going to talk about one of the most important aspects of Angular framework, which is forms. So we have already seen how template for template driven form works. Now it's a time for us to look and look and deep dive into reactive forms. So let's quickly go to the Chrome browser and see that what exactly we are trying to be building. Let's go to the website that we are trying to build. So let me just refresh this page once again and start from the login page. If I log in and I quickly land on the home. And the students is the page that we are going to be building. And here is their area the, on, the, on this page. They're going to be working on forms. So let's say if I click on any one of the uh, any one of the tuple, any one of the row over here, I can look at the view students. And this is a reactive form which is being rendered on our pop up. I can cancel it. And at the same time, I can also add the form by name by entering the name, country, state, declaration, course name, and things like that. So um, without further ado, let's quickly go back to Angular documentation and talk a little bit about form and how they are structured. Understand this, that reactive form precisely has four different classes. These four different classes are linked with one another in a very unique way. So abstract control is a parent class. So understand this, that there are four essential classes in case of reactive forms, which are going to be used more often. These four classes and there are some of those methods defined inside these classes. The first class is abstract control. Second class is form control. The third class is form group and the fourth class is form array. And let me tell you how these classes are linked. So abstract control is a parent class for all these three classes, which is form control, form group and form array. What that means is that the, that the method which are available within the abstract control are also available through inheritance in form control, are also available through the inheritance in form group, and also available in the forms array. So just understand these this, this thing now, and when we deep dive into when we start writing code for form, we will understand its usage much more effectively. So now let's go back to VS Code and see how our code is structured right now. And let us just start coding things. Here's the VS code for us. Just wrap it up. And student record is the is the record that is the component that we're going to be changing. Yeah. This is the API response. So far we are only using the mocked responses. Just wait for a while. After the reactive form, I'm going to be talking about asynchronous programming. So just hold on for now. And that's when we'll start creating services for this and I'll, I'll explain what services are in a moment but before that let's just let us just finish this thing the first thing that we want to do here in this case is whenever we have any of the form whenever we are talking about reactive in that case we always need to import certain modules what are those modules which are which, which are required for reactive form let us just import those and I'll show you what those are. The first one is forms module. The student record is also part of the dashboard module. So in the dashboard module, let us see how many modules we have taken so far. Yes, so essentially both these modules are already available. The reactive forms module and the forms module. So these, if these two modules are available, then all the other component and all the other utilities within the reactive form realm would be available to student record already because student record is basically part of the dashboard module. Now we are going to be creating forms. So let us just quickly go to VS Code and start importing the important libraries. So after the Angular core, when I'm importing component and on it, I need to import functions and classes. Of Angular forms. So follow along. Here forms. Then I'm gonna be importing form control form builder form group here and then validators. We'll make use of some of the validators and i'll show you how to make use of them and i'll just show you how to create custom ones later on 
quickly create a constructor and inject the dependencies which is form builder first and then let me just align this better it comes here now let us just create a form so let's create a form group instance so there's going to be student details form this is going to be of type form group and i'm going to be making a form group using a form builder service so this dot fp dot group the group essentially returns a form group and inside it we will have to define its form control right so first i'm going to be making name and this name i'm just keeping it empty for now let's just make it a mandatory field so this is how you make any field mandatory in reactive form validators so you need to provide a validator in the declaration itself so the first is name and now we're going to be creating other properties the other is country let's just change country now we're going to be creating state After state, I'm going to be making passport declaration. After it, after passport declaration, fitness declaration. Now I'm going to be making course name. after course name it's subject date city the city it's going to be street after street it's going to be address 2 so essentially we are now creating multiple form control which will be defined inside your form element so after address to it is email let's just make another one after email it's going to be zip move this comma from here now we have created a form group with the name student declare details form right so now now we are going to be creating some getters so these getters are essentially going to be used for getting the form control instance defined inside the form student details form so how do we define one so it's simple so let's say if we have a form control name as name so the getter name is going to be name control so this essentially defines what is the control that we are going to be returning from this getter so if this is a getter it needs to have a return let's get a return and then this dot student detail form dot get so student detail form is a form group instance and in order to receive a control defined inside a form group instance a method which is used from form group class is get so with get we need to define the control name in this case it is name and then type cast it to be of form control and that's it so now name control similarly we are going to be having all control for all of these so let's just paste this 14 times name 
and comes country make it as then state the state its passport declaration After passport declaration, it's first witness declaration. After that, we're going to be making a course name. After course name, objects. After subject, it's going to be date, city, street. Then comes address to email and zip. So let's just change these as well. Let's just remove the other ones. I don't think we need them. Now we have created getters for all our form control which are defined inside a form group instance with the name student details form now we are going to be defining a template for this form i want to bring your attention to ng bootstrap so let me quickly go back to browser and show you the documentation here we have so essentially what we are going to be building is a model and inside a model we want to display a form form which is going to be having fields that we have re just recently created in our ts file let us just see which form model i'm going to be creating thing of that sort and close it launch a model yep so that's essentially what we need right so we need this type of model as well and we need this type of model as well wherein it expects user to enter a date so let's just close this and go back to vs code and we are going to be creating a model something similar to what we have just seen 